I've got some business. It ain't strictly football, but it does concern the AC in this place. Someone's putting a squeeze on it. And the first thing we got to do is sort out this little firm drain in the till. All some faces here next Thursday. Lots of them. Top Dog was always about the dangers of being Top Dog. It's about the man who puts his head above the parapet because in that position you're always the person that is going to be taken down. And really for me that's what, what, what the movie is about, the underlying story. Yeah, it's, uh, it's a guy who lives a uh, duplicitous life. Um, to some people he's the Top Dog. To the other side of the life he's Billy, Dad, Husband. Um, but the thing with being the top dog is um, there'll always be a bigger dog with bigger teeth. It's just whether, whether or when you get to meet that person or that dog. There was a few of us involved, so decisions were kind of shared and, you know, who we should take. Uh, uh, Leo had some great casting ideas that were used in the end and um, it was really nice, nice process. I did a film Green Street with Dougie, the writer, years ago. Um, we met for a drink in Soho, he told me about this book that he wanted to develop into a film. I said, I know just the man, introduced him to Jonathan Sothcott, very good friends with Martin, and we were very lucky. Uh, Martin was in LA at the time, we had some Skype chats and, and talked about the script. Martin loved it as much as we did, and we were very lucky Martin then came on board. And so, um, so I was, yeah, I was there from the casting process, um, you know, quite a few of my friends in there, and uh, and so to come from from that side of it, as opposed to audition on the set, film it, it was a it was a lovely thing and something that I'd definitely love to do again. But you could you couldn't do a film like this without it being. Um, if you had if you had an army and a dictator on six day weeks and you know long days and all the rest of it, you'd pretty soon have a mutiny on your hands. But well, I no, always... but you would have done so. Yeah. Although Martin very much at the top of the tree, it you know it wasn't a dictatorship. It was a collaborative. Well, thing. when we start, uh, it doesn't matter what film I've ever worked on. It, it's uh, I, I tell everybody that when we're on a set, is the best idea will stick. It doesn't matter where it comes from. It doesn't matter if it comes from the, the geezer who's serving you dinner. If he's got a great idea and says, Martin, what about if you did that? Wow, man, that's great. What am I going to do? Say, no, we're not going to use that. We're using mine. But you use the best idea should stick. I saw many an actor on the set, you know, sort of come on the set going, right, I'm here to do my job. And, and then Martin will sprinkle a little bit of magic dust on them and say, look, do what you want to do. And you just see them, you see the, light, the eyes sparkle, they start throwing things in and really, you know, growing into it and, and, and sort of elevating it from the page. I think that's the, that's the difference, what I've learned over the years, you know, in talking to lots of uh, old-school gangsters and, and uh, different people, is that uh, going into Broadmoor and chatting with people, you know, that are in that position, is that there's people in there, people... There's certain people that don't have a conscience... They don't see what's going to happen the other side of that fight, and they just see the moment. And uh, I think as, as soon as you're someone with a conscience and you can see beyond that fight, you stop and take, take stock. But there's certain people that don't. It's all a bit luck, stuff, isn't it?